Dear students, welcome to the video course on microelectronic circuits. I am Dr. M. C. Anumantaraju, an associate professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, PMS Institute of Technology and Management, Bangalore. So, how do we define microelectronic circuits? The microelectronic circuits is a subfield of electronics. As the name suggests, microelectronic relates to the study and manufacture of very small electronic designs and components. The microelectronic devices are typically made from the semiconductor materials. Many components of normal electronic design are available in a microelectronic equivalent. These include transistors, capacitors, inductors, resistors, diodes and naturally insulators and conductors can all be found in microelectronic devices. The preliminary requirements of the microelectronic circuit course are as follows. Number one, it needs a review of linear circuits and its operational concept. Number two, the knowledge of uh, network theorems and its analysis is highly essential. Number three, since most of the circuits in this course rely on single time, single time constant circuits, STC circuits. Therefore, knowledge of STC circuits is required. Number four, although various domains are used in the analysis of microelectronic circuits, the S domain analysis is exploited here to obtain the frequency response of the circuits. The topics covered in this course are mainly suitable for Vishweshwarya Technological University, VTU, Belgaum, India. The syllabus is divided into two parts, namely Part A and Part B. The Part A consists of four units, whereas Part B consists only three units. The units covered under Part A are as follows. Unit 1 comprises MOS field effect transistors, shortly MOSFET. Unit 2 covers single scale integrated circuit amplifiers. The continuation of this chapter is dealt again in Unit 3. Differential and multistage amplifiers are discussed in Unit 4. The Part B covers Unit 5, which describes about feedback amplifiers. The operational amplifiers and its related circuits are discussed in Unit 6. This course ends up by covering digital CMOS circuits in Unit 7. The textbook prescribed for this course is an microelectronic circuits authored by Adal S. Cedra, Kenneth C. Smith. This book is adopted by Professor Arun N. Chandorkar of IIT Mumbai. The fifth edition of this uh, text published by Oxford University Press in 2009 is recommended for this course. The outcome of the microelectronic course is as follows. Upon successful completion of this course, the students gain proficiency, skills, and knowledge to understand the basic principle and abstraction that are used in the design of MOSFET amplifiers. Analyze discrete and integrated form of microelectronic circuits. Design and construct analog and digital circuits with its performance measurement. So let's commence the course with uh, unit 1. In unit 1, we study about MOS field effect transistor shortly called as MOSFETs. The two major electronic devices that are widely used are the bipolar junction transistor and MOS field effect transistor. This chapter gives, gives a basic introduction to the 
MOSFETs. Here, firstly, we study the device structure and the physical operation of the MOSFET that leads to the description of its terminal characteristics. To establish a high degree of familiarity with the operation of a transistor as a circuit element, a large number of examples are presented of DC circuits utilizing the uh, device. The large signal amplifier operation of the basic common source circuit is then studied and used to delineate the region over which the device can be used as a linear amplifier from those regions where it can be used as a switch. This makes clear the need for biasing the transistor and leads naturally to the study of biasing methods. The biasing methods used here are for discrete circuits whereas IC biasing is dealt in unit 2. The next small signal operation and models is studied. This is followed with study of basic amplifier configurations for discrete amplifier circuits. The internal capacitance effects that limit the high frequency operation of the transistor are then studied and the high frequency equivalent circuit model is presented. The model is then used to determine the high frequency response of common source amplifier. Also, the low frequency response resulting from the use of coupling and bypass capacitor is presented in this chapter. Further, the basic digital logic inverter circuit is studied as a last topic in this unit followed with depletion type of MOSFET. Upon successful completion of this unit, the students will be able to learn the physical structure of the MOSFET transistor and its operation, use of MOSFET as a voltage controlled uh, device, it's a second uh, uh, point. The third one is uh, analyze and design circuits using MOSFET resistors and DC sources. It's the third point. Fourth point is the transistor application as an amplifier and as a switch. The fifth uh, point what students are gaining is obtaining a linear amplification from a fundamentally non-linear uh, device. Lastly, the basic ways of connecting MOSFET to construct the amplifiers is discussed in this chapter. The electronic devices, as we mentioned, it can be classified into two types based on the uh, based on the uh, you know uh, devices category, but electronic devices also can be classified based on uh, terminals, namely two terminal devices and three terminal devices. Two terminal devices such as uh, uh, diodes, resistors, and capacitors. So these are the examples for two terminal. Uh, devices, the main drawback of these two terminal devices is they have limited applications. For example, clippers, clampers, filters, etc. The other category of devices is three terminal devices such as bipolar junction transistor, MOSFETs, UJTs, etc. The advantage of three terminal devices are they are in, used in numerous applications such as amplifiers, digital logic, memory, etc. Now let us study the basic principle involved in the three terminal devices. Three terminal device apply the basic principle as the voltage between two terminals is used to control the current flow in the third terminal. As you can see in this diagram, the voltage between the two terminals uh, is applied the voltage between the terminal here and the terminal here can be applied so to control the current movement from top to the bottom. Okay, the current flow in this third terminal is based on the control terminal. This shows that the implemented control source 
act as a switch. Next, we'll discuss uh, difference between the MOSFETs and uh, BJTs. So these are the popular devices uh, presently uh, used in various applications. MOSFETs and BJTs. The MOSFETs are smaller in size compared to the BJT. Also, the MOSFET requires smaller area in the silicon IC compared to the bipolar junction transistors. The manufacturing process of MOSFETs is relatively simple whereas uh, for the BJTs the manufacturing process is complex. The MOSFET operation requires comparatively very little power whereas BJT's operation requires high power. The MOSFETs are used to implement analog and as well as digital functions called as mixed signal design. Although BJTs are used for analog and digital functions but BJTs consumes very high power. The MOSFETs occupy small space in the integrated circuits so it is possible to obtain high packing density which is greater than 200 million. Whereas in BJT since BJT occupies large space in the integrated circuits so BJT's packing density is very less. The MOSFETs performance for analog applications is very less compared to the BJTs. The BJT performance for analog applications is very high. So that's all for the first lecture. Next topic of discussion is MOSFET device structure. Thanks for watching this uh, video. Wait for next video. Thank you all.